Section 16 of the Great Chicago Fire by Various Authors Report of the Chicago Relief and Aid Society, Part 7 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Nationalities The world came to the help of Chicago in her great calamity, for humanity's sake and with no selfish purpose. And yet, all those who were helping us were stretching out their full hands to their own people. The sufferers by the fire were of all nationalities, and of the 18,478 families who have needed succor, 1,965 only were of native birth. Of the other 16,513, the larger proportion, perhaps, were naturalized citizens, but they were made up of all the civilized nations of the earth. Those returned as Africans are, of course, all Americans by birth, and we have, therefore, according to the following table, twenty distinct nationalities represented among those whose great desolation appealed so strongly to the sympathies of all peoples. The noble response would have, we are sure, been no more prompt and no more bountiful had the whole world known that it was brothers of their own blood who had thus been stricken with sudden calamity that they made haste to help. But it is none the less interesting to know that a generous impulse has thus anticipated what might have seemed a national obligation. The following table is an accurate return from the books kept at all the distributing stations. Nationality, number of families. American, 1,724. English, 599. Scotch, 195. Irish, 5,512. German, 7,280. French, 185. Italian, 112. Canadians, 94. Swiss, 30. Danish, 14. Spanish, 2. Polish, 90. Russian, 2. Jewish, 43. Hungarian, 4. Bohemian, 208. Welsh, 10. Belgian, 23. Holland, 5. Greek, 1. Scandinavian, 2,104. African, 241. Total, 18,478 families. Future Wants We have many inquiries from all quarters as to the future. In view of the great generosity with which our people have been treated, we have felt that further demands ought not to be pressed upon public attention until we were in possession of some definite knowledge which would enable us to approximate their extent for the winter, and we herewith furnish definite figures, so far as possible, together with estimates based upon our experience in the work. Future wants depend largely upon the weather, as outdoor labor can be prosecuted in a mild winter, which must stop in a season of great severity. Now at the beginning of winter we have no reasonable ground for expecting the demand to decrease or even stand still. It will be observed from the foregoing tables that for the week ending November 18th the number of families receiving assistance increased from 12,765 to 14,137, and that for the week ending November 25th there was a further increase from 14,137 to 15,122 families, an alarming percentage of addition. In our estimates we have taken the present number as a basis, and the period of six months from October 9th as the time to be covered for the present winter. It is very certain that there will be an increase of the present number of families during a portion of the winter, but we expect this to be counterbalanced by a falling off toward spring. Estimate 
of Expenditures of Chicago Relief and Aid Society for six months, from October 9, 1871 to April 9, 1872. Food and Fuel Rations for 15,122 families of five persons each at $3.10.5 per week. $46,953.81. Shelter Committee, 8,000 furnished houses at $125 each, $1 million. Barracks and furniture for 2,000 families at $80 each, $160,000. Hospital and storehouses, $83,000. Stoves, in addition to those used in new houses and barracks, $75,000. Special Bureau, $250,000. Charitable Institutions, $25,000. Deducting contributions of clothing and mattresses and furniture furnished by the Shelter Committee, already charged, it is estimated that 10,081 of the 15,122 families must be supplied with clothing, shoes, furniture, beds, and bedding at a cost of $866,966. Current expenses at $9,758.98 a week for 26 weeks. $253,733.48. General Expenses, Shelter Committee, $42,000. Total Expenditures, $3,976,498.54. Total of Contributions, $3,418,188.54. Deficit, $558,310.34. It is expected that the current expenses can be materially diminished, but if continued at the present rate, they would come to a little over 7% on the gross amount to be expended. The expense of conducting a business which is so largely of a retail character, including visitors as well as distributors, is reduced from the fact that the heads of the various departments are paid no compensation. End of section 16